the fuel over your destination is going to be like this insane negative number. Uh, that's a little little interesting. <laughs> Flying a new airplane is always a interesting experience, at least so far for me. Uh, I find it to be really interesting because I feel like a lot of people just have not really put the airplane through the paces in the real world, right? They haven't gone on real missions and and done uh, any real trips for the most part, you know, especially when you're flying something like a Honda. Um, you know, there's, there's release numbers, but you never really know if a manufacturer is telling the whole truth when they're trying to sell a plane. Right. So there's just uh, there's a, a lot of interesting things for you to test out and experiment with. And that was certainly uh, some of the things that I was able to do over the last year is really test out the Honda, test out what the numbers are and, and see what it's all about. And so uh, this uh, this story was actually with another friend of mine and uh, we were out flying and really we were going to be stretching the legs of the Honda jet today. Uh, so what we ended up the mission was. We were going to be flying two passengers uh, with the baggage full of stuff um, and the two of us up front. And we were going to be flying from St. George, Utah to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. And that is quite a quite a stretch in something like a Honda jet. And technically based on numbers, shouldn't be able to do it. But the two of us, we, we kind of joke around, but we, we turned into the, the long range uh, people. We were the guys that always took the Hondas on the trips and so this trip we're running the numbers and we're going through things and and everything is looking pretty good uh and, and that's a, that's definitely uh an interesting bit it's the middle of summer and so you know the temperature is hot we're part now st george which is typically 90 to 100 degrees in the middle of the summer and and so we're going to be landing there about three four o'clock in the afternoon and and uh, taking off about five o'clock in the evening so it still is pretty dang warm out it's like 90 degrees so you know, you got to take into account weights and, and everything else in terms of getting out of there. And the airport's at about four to 5,000 feet. I can't remember the exact uh, airport elevation, but, you know, we were we were definitely uh, getting close to, to the max for numbers. Flying all the way out to, to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, if you guys have ever been familiar with the Midwest and the weather and, 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 and the storms that can come in, or maybe even there's not storms, but there's just low visibility. You know, you have fog over the airport. Sault Ste. Marie is is located uh, right on the Great Lakes. And so uh, they get a lot of um, low visibility conditions and, and, and everything else. And so to be flying that distance, which I believe is somewhere around 1400 miles, you gotta make sure everything kind of lines up, right? You gotta make sure that, okay, it's not gonna be too hot out of, out of St. George so we can carry enough fuel. And it's not gonna be really poor weather conditions in Sault Ste. Marie because basically the flight's gonna be around four hours. And so, uh, having a four-hour endurance and making sure we have fuel reserves in case we have to go somewhere else or divert somewhere else uh, is is really, really huge. And so we're looking at the weather, and everything seems to be lining up. Everything seems to be good uh, on both ends, which is great. Uh, so we're, we did our flight plan. Everything looks great. We're planning out alternate airports. You know, you, I, we definitely didn't want to put all of our eggs in one basket. But uh, I can say the two of us were super excited to do this. Ironically, about a week maybe two weeks before one of our, one of our other fellows that we fly with ended up setting, I believe the official record uh, for the Honda. And that was about a three hour, 45, three hour, 50 minute uh, endurance up to somewhere in Canada and uh, from Phoenix to Canada. And so we were uh, trying to beat that, right? It was just uh, this kind of fun little challenge. And, and, and so anyways, we landed in St. Uh, uh, St. George, we get our passengers loaded up. Everything is looking good. We take off. We're doing our climb profile just straight out of the book. And we ultimately get into long-range cruise in the Honda. And, you know, as you're going through this, the numbers are looking good. As you're climbing, though, it's, it's kind of wild seeing the, the fuel over your destination is going to be like this insane negative number. Uh, that's a little, little interesting. The plane doesn't quite compensate for climbs and speeds and all that stuff. So you're just looking at like this negative, you know, X amount of pounds of fuel once you get over your destination, which is not good in case in case you don't know you want positive amounts of fuel uh, over the destination. So uh, we're flying, we're en route, and we're evaluating. It's starting to look pretty good. You know, it's starting to look like we're, we're going to be right at our minimum amount of fuel that we want to be landing at, which is a good thing early on in the trip if you have your minimum amount of fuel, 
you're only going to uh, end up burning less than what you're showing. At the very beginning, and once you get up to your cruise altitude, that's going to be uh, a very conservative number. And as you keep going, you're going to continue to save more and more fuel, assuming you're following the profile that, that the manufacturer published. And, and so as we're going, everything's looking good, weather's looking good, and we averaged uh, realistically about a, a 20 knot tailwind the entire way. So definitely helpful, you know, having that extra 20 knots is great. And uh, as we're going outward, numbers look great. We're, we're getting set up and, and I believe we're kind of over Minneapolis or so. And, and uh, it was kind of fun, we're talking to ATC and at this time it's like the middle of COVID, nobody's flying and they're, they're kind of chatting to us and having a good time talking to us about, you know, the Honda and getting some different information because he's looking at our route saying, oh my gosh, that's a really long flight, you know, for this, for this little airplane. And we set up our descent rate at about four and a half degrees uh, getting into uh, getting into Sault Ste. Marie. So the big benefit to this is we're departing one small airport and we're going into the next small airport. And everything looks great. Uh, we set up, we start descending, we're doing about, you know, 2,500 feet a minute or so. And uh, and we ultimately, we end up landing right at, right at the, the minimum amount that we planned. Everything looked great in terms of the planning and, and uh, the flight executed wonderfully. And so our final numbers ended up being three hours and 59 minutes and I think 50 seconds or something ridiculous. And it was a 1,400 mile trip, roughly, it was somewhere in there, 1,400. Uh, you know, plus or minus maybe 50 miles. And, uh, and so absolutely incredible. And actually, as a matter of fact, that the fellow uh, my, and myself ended up flying out. We did that trip three more times uh, and, and just the plane did absolutely amazing. And so we got to really experience that, that full four hour endurance that, uh, that's published in the Honda, which was really, really neat. We had a couple of Harrier experiences getting in and out of there with some patchy fog and and things looking um, borderline uh, not not good and, and almost had to divert a couple times. But luckily, every single time we did the trip, it worked out absolutely beautifully. Uh, we had a couple friends flying in there in the Lear 60 a few times uh, doing the exact same mission. And they're like, we don't know how you did it. Because uh, every single time they flew in, of course, there was weather and really low visibility or storms in the area. And uh, really just made the trip pretty rough, but luckily for us flying our Honda, everything worked out great, our plans went excellent, and uh, we made it uh, in there, and I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe we set an unofficial record for uh, longest uh, flight time in a Honda. Uh, I know the one I do have that's official is three hours and 59 minutes. I believe we actually did set a four hour and two minute flight, unfortunately. Uh, somewhere, I, I lost the photos of that, but uh, very, very cool, very fun. Cool experience getting to test out a new airplane and actually seeing the real numbers in real life. Hey gang, here from Hangar Talk. Thank you so much for plugging into the channel, liking, subscribing. We appreciate all you continuous subscribers and we can't wait to see you on the next one.